You know, there's a saying, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. One of the many narratives you hear when it comes to the history of the X-Men for years is that the characters of Professor X and Magneto were based on Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X respectively. I'm here to tell you that this is not true. And seeing that it's Black History Month, I want to use this video to thoroughly debunk this lie by giving you guys a little bit of insight to the history surrounding these men and these characters. So where did this myth originate from exactly? One of the main themes of the X-Men is the conflict that mutants have with humans and their struggle to peacefully coexist with them. Now Professor X and Magneto both have different methods of achieving this goal, Charles going the peaceful route while Eric being the one willing to use force. Due to the similarities of these characters' motivations and their methods, when it comes to the liberation of mutants, people would compare them to Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and their quest to liberate black Americans in this country, MLK being the one going the peaceful route, while Malcolm X being the one willing to use force. Now you could make that comparison between MLK and Professor X, given that MLK supported the idea of peaceful integration using one of his iconic speeches, I have a dream, but that would only make the narrative half true. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but leading up to his death, MLK actually began to shift away from the idea of integration, but that's a whole different discussion. Let's talk about Malcolm X and Magneto. Malcolm X is probably one of the most misunderstood civil rights figures. A lot of people think he's just a militant version of MLK, and that couldn't be further from the truth. And to be completely honest, I think it's this myth that these characters were based off these men is what led people to believe that this is what Malcolm X is. Ain't that funny? But anyway, I'm gonna play a few clips of Malcolm X so you guys can really get a better understanding of his positions when it comes to the struggles of black Americans in this country. If white immigrants can come to this country 50 years ago with nickels and dimes and no education and come here and pool their little nickels and dimes and no education, into, with, and set up little stores, develop these stores into larger stores, develop this into an industry which creates job opportunities for whites. Since Lincoln was supposed to have freed the black man a hundred years ago, and today the black man, according to the government economist, has spending power of $20 billion per year, we feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any businesses, not creating any industry, not creating any job opportunities for his own kind, he's not in a moral position to point the finger today at the white man and tell the white man that he's discriminating against him for not giving him a job in factories that he, has, he himself set up. If the black man has $20 billion, and these so-called Negro leaders are such geniuses that they can integrate white restaurants and integrate white factories and integrate force themselves into that which the white man has set up, they should use this same ingenuity to show the black people how to pool our wealth and set up something of our own. And then we won't have to force our way into his anymore. One as long as we sit around here trying to pray to the white man's God and go to the white man's church and into the white man's school, we'll be brainwashed by the white man's educational system and we'll continue to look down upon ourselves and we'll continue to, to, to be a beggar to him because we'll continue to think that he's superior to us. Instead of the Negro leaders having the black man begging for a chance to, uh, uh, to dine in white restaurants, the Negro leader should be showing the black man how to do something to strengthen his own economy, to, to, make a, to give himself an independent economy or to provide job opportunities for himself, not begging for a cup of coffee in a white man's restaurant. Dr. King's goals are quite different from yours. He believes in integration. Complete well, integration of society. Is that if, correct? If, if integra no, well, that's where Dr. King is mixed up. Uh, his goal should be the solution of the problem of the black man in America. Now, not integration. Integration is the method toward obtaining that goal. And what the Negro leader has done is gotten himself wrapped up in the method and has forgotten what the goal is. The goal is the, is the, is the dignity of the black man in America. He wants respect as a human being. He wants recognition as a human being. Now, if integration will get him that, all right. If segregation will get him that, all right. If separation will get him that, all right. 
But after he gets integration and he still doesn't have this dignity and this uh, recognition as a human being, then his problem is still not solved. Well, isn't this exactly what Dr. King is looking towards? And that is the day when the Negro will be treated with dignity. Wasn't this, after all, the result of the Montgomery bus boycott? No, because uh, I don't think you can, uh, uh, having an opportunity to ride either on the front or the back or in the middle of someone else's bus doesn't dignify you. When you have your own bus, then you have dignity. When you have your own school, you have dignity. When you have your own country, you have dignity. When you have something of your own, you have dignity. But whenever you are begging for a chance to participate in that which belongs to someone else or use that which belongs to someone else on an equal basis with the owner, that's not dignity, that's ignorance. So Malcolm X was not only against the idea of integration, but he didn't even believe in protesting and even sitting in the front of buses to be the solution. To really drive home my point, I'm going to read a piece from one of his most iconic speeches, The Ballot or the Bullet. I don't believe in any kind of integration. I'm not even worried about it because I know you're not going to get it anyway. You're not going to get it because you're afraid to die. You've got to be ready to die if you try and force yourself on the white man because he'll get just as violent as those crackers in Mississippi right here in Cleveland. So now that you guys have a better understanding of Malcolm X and his positions, let's talk about Magneto. As a lot of you may know, Magneto's quest for liberating mutants is driven by him being a holocaust survivor and he developed this hatred for humans, but he wasn't always this sympathetic villain that people know him to be. See, when Magneto first appeared, he was a supremacist really. He thought that mutants were superior to humans and that they should be ruled by mutants. He even makes this clear during an exchange the first time he interacts with Professor X. Let's read it together, shall we? This is X-Men number 4, 1965. Only you and your X-Men stand between the mutants and world conquest. Why? Why do you fight us? For you too are a mutant. But I seek to save mankind, not destroy it. We must use our powers to bring about a golden age on Earth, side by side with ordinary humans. Never. The humans must be our slaves. They are not worthy to share dominion of Earth with us. You have made your choice. Forevermore, we are mortal foes. So Magneto being a holocaust survivor was really a partial retcon. He technically had no origin but his motivations were completely different. So it would be foolish to compare either version of Magneto to Malcolm X. But there's something else I want to show you to really prove my point. Now as you may know Stan Lee created the X-Men. But the X-Men that everyone knows today can be attributed to Chris Claremont. And he started writing the X-Men during the 1970s. He's written some classic X-Men stories like Days of Future Past and the Phoenix Saga, which both have been adapted into films. Chris Claremont himself has even debunked the idea that Professor X and Magneto could be based off MLK and Malcolm X. This is from an interview from Empire Online with Chris Claremont. If you want to check this article out, I'm going to link it in the description. In this interview, he says, quote, It was blended in. There's a lot of talk online now that Magneto stands in for Malcolm X and Xavier stands in for Martin Luther King which is totally valid, but for me, being an immigrant, white, to make that analogy felt incredibly presumptuous. An equivalent analogy could be made to Israeli Prime Minister Menahem Begin as Magneto, evolving through his life from a terrorist in 1947 to a winner of the Nobel Peace Prize 30 years later. That evolution was something I wanted to apply to the relationship between Xavier and Magneto. It's an evolving 150 issue arc. Magneto's resurrection as an angry anti-human pro-mutant terrorist. In number 150 he lashes out and the person that gets hit is Kitty Pride, a 13 year old kid. His shattering realization is what kind of monster have I become? Has what the Nazis did to me in the shore made me a Nazi? Ultimately my goal for the character was that he would come full circle and become Xavier's heir. Now Chris Claremont referenced X-Men number 150. This is where we learn that Magneto was a holocaust survivor and I'm going to read specifically the part where Kitty Pride gets hurt. I swore then that I would not rest till I had created a world where my kind, mutants, could live free and safe and unafraid, where such as you little one could be happy. Instead I have slain you. I remember my own childhood, the gas chambers at Auschwitz, the guards joking as they herded my family to their death, as our lives were nothing to them so human lives became nothing to me. Remember I said Magneto technically had no origin, 
but his motivations were completely different. Two different motivations, almost 20 years apart, one stemming from supremacy and one from the hatred of what was done to his family. Now I'm sure I've rambled long enough, but I just had to do this video to debunk this myth because it's specifically around Black History Month that I hear it repeated the most. So I hope this video has left you guys with some insight when it comes to these real life figures and these characters. Maybe you can share this video with anyone who continues to perpetuate this lie. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.